You are tuning in to the Lifehouse Kids video message for Sunday, May 31st. We pray that you are encouraged by this week's message from Pastor Wendy Gomez. Hi there. Welcome. It hopefully is Sunday where you are. Today it's Saturday for me and um, I'm coming to you from my happy place here on my deck. The pool is behind me, but I'm excited about our lesson today. And it is a special weekend, and we will get to that in just a minute, but let's pray first before we get started. Father God, I thank you for your love. Your um, sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us that we might have life and life more abundantly. I thank you for keeping us safe and um, just helping us to have an awesome day. And I just thank you that we are able to come together again uh, today, this Sunday, to worship you together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, when you're l listening to this, it'll be Sunday, and it's actually our first Sunday back together again. We're not having children's church just yet, but we will soon. But I encourage you, if you don't come this Sunday, come next Sunday. We have something for you kiddos when you come that will help you be able to focus on the service and what Pastor uh, Missy has for us. So let's get into our lesson. Um, I have a balloon. I know we love balloons. Um, you know, I have even done balloons. I've made funny animals out of balloons, long balloons. People decorate with balloons. Um, they celebrate with balloons. You know, birthdays, weddings, celebrations. People have balloons, but you know, I have this blue balloon here and there's a problem with it. And what's the problem? Yes it needs air in it it needs to be filled up or it's not much fun to celebrate with a balloon that's deflated so we need to breathe life into this balloon well you know it reminds me of what is being celebrated this weekend and it's it's an interesting word it's called pentecost and pentecost came in the bible if you go to the book of acts which is in the new testament and go to chapter two well i encourage you to start in chapter one and read up to chapter two and then keep reading and you're just going to want to keep reading because it is a fun read what god has in there for you but pentecost was a celebration and it's funny because in my bible it was explaining it to me that it was seven weeks plus one day after Passover. Seven weeks plus one day is what? Yes, 50 days after. And so this was a time in Jerusalem where all the Jewish men were expected to come back to Jerusalem to celebrate. And this was called the feast, let me make sure I have it right, feast of weeks or the day of first fruits and so this was a, a feast that they were celebrating this Pentecost and so they were coming back they would be in Jerusalem and there would be a lot of people there especially the men would be there and they would be there in Jerusalem to celebrate this and this is it came at a cool time because you know Jesus had died on the cross but he had come back to life and he had just met with the disciples and he had shared with them that you know he he had to go be with his father God in heaven and he wasn't going to leave them alone but he was going to leave them the gift of the Holy Spirit and they were sad because he was leaving and they even stood there as and he they watched him ascend into heaven through the clouds and it, it talks about he went to heaven the same way he's coming back so we always should be looking to the clouds for Jesus's return so exciting I can't wait for his return but anyways I get sidetracked but this was the time and so they had gone to Jerusalem and they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and they had been, they were there 
and they were in a, it was called an upper room. So they were in this upper room of this building and they were waiting. And you know, the, the balloon reminds me of, you know, at this point, they were waiting for this breath of life from God for them. They, they didn't know how it was coming, but it's kind of like this balloon. Let's see, watch. So I put some air into it. It's not full yet, but that's what it reminded me of. So they're in this room and they're anxiously waiting for this gift of the Holy Spirit. Cause you know, Jesus told them he was sending it and Jesus doesn't lie. So they were waiting and praying and they were, they were just in one accord, it says. That means they were in agreement with each other. They were all believing for the same thing. Uh, wouldn't that be cool if we all in our country, especially right now, would be as anxiously waiting for Jesus' return and in one accord, together, loving on the Lord and worshiping Him. Well, that's what they were doing. And it was so cool because this is, I know I say this every week, but it is my one of my favorite stories. While they were there, all of a sudden it says in verse two, there came the sound from heaven as of mighty rushing wind. Hear it? Mighty rushing wind, they could hear that sound. And then imagine, I don't know if you can see that flame or not. It says here, then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and, to, and they began to speak with other tongues. <gasps> now look, hold on a minute. Sound of a mighty rushing wind. It appeared like fire sat above each one of their heads. <sighs> they were filled with the Holy Spirit you know it how exciting that must have been for them and you know what I guess you know being filled with the Holy Spirit they 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 sensed God's presence filling them as this was happening you know Jesus had gone what were they going to do I'm sure they were thinking what are we going to do now Lord Jesus is gone he was doing miracles he was healing people. People were turning to him left and right. He was preaching and you know, amazing things were happening. Well, I'll tell you what, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues. And I guess at this point, they were around the people that were in the city and they started speaking in the languages of the different people. And this, these people were from all over the area. So they, they spoke different languages. And if you read through it, it'll tell you about the different places throughout that area that they were from. Some from Egypt, the Medes, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia. And it goes on, the list goes on. And they could understand them, speaking to them. As the Holy Spirit filled them, they started speaking these tongues, this, this different tongues, different languages. They could hear them, but they just weren't talking to them. They were telling them of the wonderful things of God. And they heard them and they were like, oh my goodness, what is this coming from them? I can hear them in my own language. How cool was that? Well, you know, there were some that said, oh, they must be drunk because they're acting silly, which is funny for me as I thought about it and I was studying it this week that even those people that made fun of them, they made fun of them because they didn't understand it. And we have to be careful not to make fun of things that we don't understand, but ask God to help us to understand. These were wondrous things of God and the things that God had done and they were sharing it with them. And it was so cool at this point Peter starts sharing with them about prophecy from the Old Testament and how it was being 
fulfilled and was taking place and he reminded them about Jesus because remember Jesus is now in in um, in heaven with God and you know as the Holy Spirit had filled them they just got bolder and bolder and started sharing with them and by the time Peter had finished talking to them this is what some of them said they said what shall we do now they took things to heart they heard what he had to say and he said men and brethren what shall we do and then this is what Peter said to them he said repent turn away and walk the other way from the sin in your life and the way that you've been living and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for it is promised to you and to your children to all who are far off and as many as the Lord our God will call how cool is that look at this they were filled with the Holy Spirit as well it was about three thousand of them were added to the church that day how magnificent that was that this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit was given to them this power because Jesus knew he couldn't walk the earth with them anymore he had a job to do but he filled them so that they would have a job to do the breath of God entered that room that day and it still is with us today and you know what just like this balloon you know God breathes life into us and this balloon has a purpose if we don't breathe life into it it can't serve its purpose let the Holy Spirit breathe life into you today God has a plan for you he has a purpose for you and just like those disciples do you know it talks about the disciples after they were filled with the Holy Spirit they made more disciples and they had boldness like never before to be able to share with others have you ever been afraid and shy and didn't want to talk to someone well God says I have the Holy Spirit for you. I've sent it to you as a gift. It will give you boldness to do the things that you are purposed to do. And many will hear it. And many will know about God and what he has done for them and what he wants to do for them and through you and for you. And so remember that. Let him breathe life into you. And you know what? Balloons are for celebrating. They, you know, you can see balloons wherever you go. And you know, God wants to use you. And it says in the word that they turn the world upside down for God. And that wasn't a bad thing. That was a great thing because they share the wondrous works of God with others. So, hey, get you some Holy Spirit. Let God breathe life into you. It may not be flames of fire over your head, but it might be, let me know, and you may or may not hear the rushing wind from heaven, be pretty cool, let me know if you do, but you go and serve the purpose that God has for you. We'll see you next week. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to this week's message. Tune in next week for more from LifeHouse Kids.